Well, good afternoon. So you, you heard from uh, Get How talking about digital economy. You know, Jacqueline talked about smart nation. In fact, uh, when we talk about, you know, in a digital economy, it is not just, you know, digital as part of the economy. In fact, digital is the economy. It is about billions of transactions connected online, you know, amongst people, businesses, data, and processes. And in fact, uh, when we look at the uh, opportunities that uh, you know, a digital economy brings, like for example, in the, in the uh, in Industry 4.0, the IoT, robotics, and we are hoping to get better healthcare through healthcare data and wearables. And it is no surprise then, if you look at that, you know, we are living in a very uh, hypo-connected world. In fact, if you look at that, you know, we are seeing that uh, in a, in a hyper-connected world, digital infrastructure is being adopted five times faster than electricity and telephony. In fact, if you look at the chart itself, it says that uh, you know, the inflection point is somewhere in uh, 2007. Do you know why it's 2007? The introduction of iPhone, smartphones. And that is that, at that point in time, that's where you see more devices connected on the internet than uh, human beings on Earth. Uh, it is uh, predicted that by 2020, 50 billion devices will be connected on the internet. And imagine, you know, with that number of devices connected in, onto the internet, while we see the opportunities in terms of, you know, uh, the ability for us to leverage all these devices to you know, conduct business better, to, uh, you know, to en enable ourselves to live a better life. Likewise, the bad guys are seeing the same opportunities, but the other way around, looking at you know, a much larger surface of attack, and they're going to leverage on that. But before I go into that, um, you know, we also realize that you know, from Siri to connected cars today, there's a rapid adoption of AI. And uh, with this adoption of AI, you know, it has actually presented uh, a lot of opportunity for us. And if you look at it, today, you know, machines can actually beat a human in a chess game. Machines can make transactions and do computation faster than any one of us. And with that, we are using machines to do trading, for example. Right? Machines are going to help us navigate and drive. I think we talk about uh, autonomous vehicles. And very soon, you know, some of us may need machines to help us with, uh, you know, pumping our heart with a pacemaker, right? So, so as much as, uh, you know, we see all these opportunities, but there's also the fear of the cyber risk. You know, it may be a nuisance today if we are unable to log on to Netflix to watch a video. But if it is affecting and taking over the control of the cars that we are driving, you know, and may threaten to stop my pacemaker, or even unable to lock a, a stock transaction in the stock market, you know, that becomes very serious uh, for all of us. We know that uh, the dark web is very much you know, a very active trading space. In fact, uh, you know, our company Trustwave actually did a a study, and uh, we managed to broke into the dark web, and this was what we, we saw. Essentially, it is no different from the Amazon that we are used to in the, in the open web, right? Uh, in the internet. You know, you can buy, you can buy malwares, you can rent bots to assemble attacks, right? In fact, uh, the business case that we, we did, you know, was uh, for merely less than $6,000, you can make a return of 90,000. We don't make the tough ROI. 1,425% ROI. And that's why the challenge becomes so daunting. Right? And with the help of machine, just imagine, with the help of machine, you are able to be more sophisticated and be more realistic and more authentic going forward. In fact, uh, imagine today, one of the simplest form of uh, e attack is fish, email phishing. Right? I think Nadav uh, mentioned that. But imagine with machine learning, the machine can go in, understand how you write your email, 
your style of writing. When you communicate with certain colleagues, this is how you, 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 you draft your email. And with that, the email can be so authentic in such a, so they make a phishing email very authentic so that you, you almost get tricked, easily get tricked into. And also imagine today, you know, you, the, the machine can go in and uh, look at our social media data uh, information, our shopping uh, behavior, and essentially, you know, and also our email. And essentially, they, they can all, almost take over control over our online identity, and our identity gets stolen very quickly. So while, while there's all the good things about automation, there's also, it comes with the challenges and all that. But can we say that, you know, if the bad guys are, are using machines to help them with cyber attacks, we need to do the same, you know. With the big shortage of uh, cyber professionals, we all know that, uh, you know, by 2020, in fact, it was predicted that, you know, 1.5 billion, oh, sorry, 1.5 million shortage of uh, cyber professionals moving forward. With the shortage of uh, cyber professionals and with the challenge of the bad guys you know, using tools and automation to launch attack, we are left with no choice but to leverage machine as well to defend against all these attacks moving forward. So moving forward, the uh, Security Operations Center, SOC in short, of the future will have to leverage technologies like big data, artificial intelligence, as well as deep machine learning. And it is only with that that it's possible to really analyze huge volume of data very quickly and automatically that a human cannot do today. So when we talk about you know, a SOC of the future, we, we are talking about an automated, intelligent-driven SOC. From a Singtel standpoint, I know uh, Jacqueline mentioned about uh, autonomous SOC and all that. We, we look at the uh, SOC of the future. There are four key aspects in the SOC of the future. Advanced visual analytics, seamless orchestration, advanced playbook, as well as, very important, a shift in paradigm and mindset. So just very quickly, um, you know, from an advanced visual analytics standpoint, it is all about you know, us applying advanced vi uh, visual analytics algorithm on metadata, as well as you know, the intelligence that we get from uh, the various sources in our SOC to make sense. And then with this output, hopefully we can help relieve the, uh, the SOC operators from the very mundane you know, repetitive work so that they can, they can actually focus on things that really matter and also be able to handle a heavier load moving forward. And then, very important moving forward is really the integrated workflow between people and AI. Because it is the seamless working between human and AI that allows us to really take advantage of machine to do a lot of the repetitive stuff so that the human themselves, or human beings like us, could then focus on the more important tasks, so that we can be more scalable, and we are able to do, in fact, uh, be able to even adopt active defense moving forward using machine. In fact, uh, it's uh, very possible. Uh, I think Nadav talked about you know, deception and, uh, and all that, uh, deceptive technology. We could even use machine and adopt new technologies like deceptive technology to bait the bad guys into our network and then you know, and go after them if need to and to trick them into that. So, so I think there's a lot of possibility with machine and with technology moving forward. And then playbook is important. You know, the playbook needs to evolve, needs to be automated. So with, uh, with emerging technology such as the session I've mentioned and also advanced technology, we need to then automate and evolve the playbook regularly. And of course, you know, with uh, the, uh, the involvement and the, 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 uh, the improvement of uh, situational awareness, then Playbook needs to be also be evolved to be more context-aware moving forward. And uh, lastly, you know, it's really about shifting of mindset. You know, we should look at machine as complementary rather than competing with us. Today, you know, in uh, some of the... Uh, the mindset is, you know, machine is going to replace our job, taking over our job. I think that we have to remove that and change our mindset. Machine will be complementing the way we do things. And very important is, we have to also shift away from the mindset that machines are tools 
actually machines should be our partner moving forward. We should partner machine rather than you know, machine being a tool to human being. And if we can all do that, machine-human collaboration will be sooner than we can imagine. So are we ready for the start of the future? Thank you.